Hi and welcome to my video on kinematics and we're going to talk about this very particular application of um, calculus, of differentiation. And again I've set this up, I've got a few things I'm going to talk about here. Here's my function I'll play with today, it's just one pretty simple example. Um, although I will state that I have set this up very deliberately um, to fit in with real life. This is a potential model for a projectile of some description uh, because negative 5 will turn into negative 10 later, you'll see this happen and negative 10 will actually become the acceleration, which suits uh, approximately, it's more like negative 9.8, but it suits the, um, the acceleration that we feel due to gravity on Earth. Um, and I've got some stuff here. Now, I will say about this video, there's gonna be a few definitions. I'm gonna talk about a few things to do with this language here. You might find it really useful to just pause the video every now and then and write down some of these definitions um, because I just don't really have enough space to write them down. It's pretty boring if I'm writing them down, so I'm really just going to state them. Um, but first, I just want to define a couple of things. Um, this T is time, and I probably should have written this here, and so hopefully this is in the screen, but time in seconds, and that's my T, and then X is my displacement. Now, I'm measuring X in metres, but it could be in kilometres, it could be in centimetres, it could be millimetres, whatever. Time I've measured in seconds, again, same thing, it could be in hours, it could be in days. So um, this is a bit of a norm. Usually most questions you get will be to do with something in real life. And most things in real life for you are probably going to be in metres per second, maybe a car basing kilometres per hour. That's about it. Uh, so anyway, we'll deal with this and then you might need to change units. So here's my function. It turns out that if X is my displacement, this is the, this is the maths and it's the easy bit. If X is my displacement, and v is my velocity, it actually turns out that if I derive this, dx dt, which is equal to negative 10, I told you that negative 10 would be there, t to the power of 1, which I'll just write as t, plus 11, that's actually my velocity. Now think about this for a second. Velocity measures the rate of change of displacement. It measures how fast you're travelling and speed, that fast is a rate of change. How many metres did you travel in that 10 seconds? That's a rate of change. So velocity is a rate of change. It's the rate of change of displacement. And of course, we know now that if you derive a function, that will give you your rate of change of displacement. So this function is a position function. It will tell me where my thing is after a number of seconds, how far away it is from wherever we started. Um, now, if I put t equals zero into here, then I get x equals negative two. So for whatever it is, x started at negative 2. After one second, I get x equals negative 5 plus 11 minus 2, which is 4. So after one second, it's got to 4, etc. This tells me where I am. This tells me my velocity at that point. If I do the calculus on it, so I do the, uh, the d to t, or derive it, it gives me instantaneous velocity. You could come up with an average velocity as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so there's my v, and of course, this leads naturally to a, which is dv dt, and that's equal to just negative 10. And of course, so this is meters because it's x, this is meters per second because it's v, and this is meters per second squared, and I told you that negative 10 would pop up, which is a pretty naturally occurring number for us. Uh, so I've got my xva here, and so it's important to note as well that a is equal to the second derivative, of x um, and so there's some information for you of course we can use the dash notation in this and in physics sometimes you'll see the dot notation as well so you might say that a is equal to v dot which is equal to x double dot that comes up um, but it doesn't come up much in the uh, the math syllabus you're working with but it could still potentially come up so there's my um, variable definitions and of course I need to add a here a is my acceleration um, sometimes x is called s, usually that's about it, maybe it's called d as well, sometimes for displacement. Uh, v is typically v, a is acceleration, but you know these are just variable names, you can call them whatever you like. Um, so, here's my little graphic down here, and I've got displacement, if you want to go from displacement to velocity, you just have to derive with respect to time. If you want to go from velocity to acceleration, you just have to derive with respect to time. Now later on when we do some anti-differentiation, you'll see that we can actually work backwards as well, but we don't need to worry about that for this video. Um, there's my things here. Now there are some other words that might get thrown around that are really important to consider. So displacement is sometimes also called distance. 
But mathematically and scientifically and physics, they're actually two different things. So distance is a, it's a quantity that just represents numerically how far you've gone. Whereas displacement involves direction as well. So let me show you the example of this. Um, let's say I'm starting here, and often if we're starting somewhere, we call that the origin. So we're starting at the origin, and let's say from the origin, I move out to here, but then I sort of come back again, and I stop there. So let's say that's two, and that's four. Now, I've actually travelled six. So if this was me going for a run, and these were kilometres, I want, want people to know I travelled six, I didn't travel two, I travelled six. Um, that's a distance. Distance, my total distance was six. My displacement is how far I am away from where I started. And this is one dimensional, so directions different. If you're talking two dimensional, which we're not now, then it might vary a little bit. But for now, my displacement's two. This thing measures my displacement, it does not measure my distance. So you've got to be really careful and aware of that. If distance comes up, you might have to analyze this or draw the graph and have a look, well, I went up to here and then I came back a bit and then I went back up again and actually do the calculations to work out the total distance traveled. Displacement's actually, in, in, in essence, when we're talking in this sense, displacement's a bit easier. Um, now, velocity's got another name as well. And so, of course, in here, that's sometimes called speed. And again, speed is kind of more loosely linked to distance, although this varies a little bit more. Um, but typically, we will talk about velocity if we're talking about the rate of change of displacement. So if I went out from here and to there, and it took me an hour, well, my speed is six kilometers per hour to do that run. Whereas my velocity is more related to displacement, so it will be two kilometers per hour. But of course, that's an average velocity. So I'm just going, well, my total displacement is two, and it took me an hour, so my average velocity is two kilometers an hour. My actual velocity in this sense is instantaneous. So let's say, for example, this is my displacement time graph, and I start at the origin, and then I run at a constant pace out to four kilometers, and then let's say um, I walk back to here, but I only walk back to two kilometers, so that's two, and that's four, and this is my time axis, there's my displacement axis. Well, you can see my overall, this is my velocity. That's an average velocity. But if you want to get an instantaneous velocity in your point, let's say at time equals 0.5 or something, it might be there, well then you would have obviously a different velocity, and you would get that from here, uh, for whatever my function is. Acceleration doesn't really have a different name, you just got to be aware of the context you're working in. So if we're talking about acceleration with respect to displacement and velocity, then obviously we're here, um, but you might have to find average acceleration as well, which would just be the average gradient between two points on a velocity graph. Um, but realistically, the kinematics we're talking about in maths is going to involve this. So it's really that simple. To rub out what's not important, none of this is important. Obviously, rewind the video if you want to look at it again. But none of this is really massively important for what you'll be doing. If you get a kinematics question in a math context, then you'll get your displacement model. And if you want to find the displacement at time equals 3, put time equals 3 into there. If you want to find a velocity when time equals 3, derive it first, then put time equals 3 into that. If you want to find the acceleration, same thing again, derive so on and so forth. If you want to find an average velocity between time equals 2 and 4, well, derive, um, derive displacement, put time equals 2 in, put time equals 4 in, you've got two coordinates on the graph, you can find an average by finding that um, gradient between. So these questions really are um, very approachable, but you know, it's, it's a, an abstract idea, so you have to go and practice it to learn the abstract idea. There's some of the definitions. Um, and hopefully that's all good. You should see it in class and you can practice from there. Thanks for coming.